Hey everybody, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. I'm gonna continue on my dollar store mat series because a lot of you have been really into it. And I'm gonna make two more themes that have been heavily requested, a water one and a desert one. They're both really simple and basically made with the exact same techniques, but I'm gonna show you some of the things I tried along the way while trying to figure out the best way to make these that didn't work. Thankfully, in the end, it was the easiest and cheapest methods that worked best. So that's great for you guys. Now, it seems like a lot of people outside of Canada are having a hard time finding these. Uh, if you're in America, uh, try Harbor Freight. Apparently they have something that's comparable, very similar, uh, and it's only like 10 bucks, but bigger. I'm gonna show you how I first made this one, which was my uh, failure water mat before I show you how I ended up making the two that I think are actually good. All right, you know the deal. Start with the back smooth side of your mat. To get the water texture, I'm again gonna be using white acrylic latex caulking. My brand of choice is the DAP Alex Plus stuff because it's cheap and reliable and it dries fast. To tint it, I mixed in some blue craft paint, and I used the cheapest craft paint you can get, which is the stuff from the dollar store. It was a bit lighter than I wanted, so I mixed in some black to darken it up. I didn't thin it down at all, or add anything else. This makes mixing a bit difficult, because it's pretty thick, but once all the paint is mixed in well, it can be applied to the surface. I find it easiest to just plop it all on, and then spread it out with a big paintbrush. To get rid of the brush strokes and even things out, and to get a bit of a ripply water texture, I used a paint roller with a long nap. I think this one was a half inch nap, but you can use whatever you've got. Um, in general, the longer the nap is, the more texture you're gonna get. So it just depends what you want. And don't use a good quality roller sleeve here for this. Get the cheapest ones you can find from the dollar store or Walmart or whatever. The trick to this is finishing it off with a final pass of the roller all in the same direction. I experimented using some plastic cling wrap to see if it would give a more interesting texture, but I didn't like it. There's no point messing around with it further. The roller is just best. When it dried, I had the brilliant idea of applying a clear glossy coating to make it look wet, make it look shiny like water. I bought the clearest caulking I could find and it was a kind of expensive one. This one was silicone and I knew as soon as I started squeezing it out that I had made a very bad choice. This particular one was very thick. I knew it was gonna be tough to spread out, but it was an expensive tube and I had already opened it, so I belligerently went forward and continued to use it. Now, I attempted to make the silicone less viscous by warming it in some hot water, but it seemed to have no effect. If anything, I think it made it worse, like it jump-started the curing process. Now, I knew I should just stop at this point, that this probably wouldn't work, but I wanted to see what would happen and I was hoping maybe it would just work out. And since these mats are so cheap and doing the first like latex step is so easy, I figured, well, if it doesn't work out, I can just make another one. I spread it out as best I could, uh, but it was a nightmare. It was so sticky. I even kept breaking tongue depressors trying to spread it out. Also, this stuff had one of the strongest eye-burning alcohol smells I have ever encountered with uh, silicone before. Often they smell vinegary, not this one. It just had that like your house is gonna explode if there is a single spark type off-gassing that was truly horrible and required a ton of ventilation in the shop. Because it had such a strong alcohol odor, it made me think the solvent in it was isopropyl alcohol and that maybe I could use isopropyl alcohol to thin it out. Well, let's just say that didn't work. All it did was make the silicone less sticky and create a sort of slime putty. I bet this could be used to make a quick mold of something, but for this, it sure wasn't helping. This one doesn't actually look that bad, uh, but after four days of drying, it's still sticky. Um, not sticky, but very tacky. I bet dust and lint is just gonna make this thing disgusting with any use. And it still smells horrible. And, uh, it certainly wasn't worth the effort or the cost of that extra silicone. Now, before jumping into making the good ones, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor. 
Ember Forge have created the best sets of metal dice I have ever had the pleasure of rolling, and I mean that. They're beautiful, insanely well crafted and detailed, but most important to me is that unlike all other metal dice sets I own, these feel nice to roll. They're balanced and hollow, meaning they don't weigh a ton or feel like they're gonna damage whatever you roll them on. They have a wonderful tactile feeling in your hand that feels like magic. They're also easy to read at a glance. And at the end of the day, you're gonna be using these to play games and you wanna be able to read them quickly. Despite the ornate detail on these dice, the numbers remain obvious and clear. And Ember Forge are not some new startup company. They're a jewelry company that has been making and selling for years. And they have hundreds of positive reviews on their Etsy store. This might be their first Kickstarter, but it ain't their first rodeo. I'm not the biggest fan of gimmicky premium dice, but I really love these. I will actually use them. And that all comes down to the fact that they feel good to use. They feel good in the hand. They roll nicely. They sound wonderful. They're still practical while being ornate and interesting. And I can't say that about any of the other fancy dice sets I own. I'll post a link in the video description so you can go check out the Kickstarter campaign and grab a set for yourself. All right, so the first attempt at the water mat was a failure. So I started again and I did the exact same thing. I tinted some white latex caulking, but this time I used acrylic ink just to see if it would make much of a difference. And it certainly worked well, but craft paint also worked fine. So there really isn't much of an incentive for you to use the more expensive ink. But look at this beautiful forbidden ice cream sundae. Oh, if you ever wanna play a mean trick on someone. I got the mix spread out all over just like last time and I textured it with the paint roller. I let it dry for a couple hours and noticed I hadn't got full coverage. There were some thin areas where the gray matte was still showing through. Wasn't a big deal. I just found a craft paint that was close in color and gave it a quick watered down coat to even things out. And once that was dry, I did not apply any sort of clear shiny whatever and instead decided to take some off white and dry brush on the white caps. This is far more simple and honestly for a play mat to drop terrain on, this is just fine. Well, let's say you want a desert mat. Well, I've got good news. You can make one using the exact same methods as the water. Just mix in brown and yellow paint instead of blue to get a good sandy tan type color. Again, if you don't get perfect coverage, just do a quick coat of craft paint in a similar color. I tried dry brushing this one with a lighter tan to see if I could give it some depth, but I didn't like it. It actually made it look less like a sandy desert ground, so I stopped and covered that up with the previous color. If you take away the things I tried that were unnecessary or didn't work, you're left with an incredibly simple process to make these mats. White latex caulking mixed with paint and a roller for texture and some dry brushing on the water if you want. I don't think you could get any simpler than this other than say just using a piece of colored fabric. And once you cover them up with some scatter terrain, they look great. For tabletop RPG, they are more than convincing enough for immersion. And even for a little skirmish game, they would work really well. You can even use them together to make a shoreline beach setup if you want. So what are your thoughts? I think they turned out lovely, but I'd like to know what you think. Let me know in the comments below. And if you did like the video, give it a like and share it with some friends so that more people can see it. Now, should I keep on making more of these mats? Or is this idea now played out? Are we done? I don't know. There's a couple more themes that I think would be really cool, but you let me know if you want to see more and if you have any more special requests, because I'm enjoying making these. As always, if you want to pick up some hobby tools or supplies and support the channel in the process, you can do so by shopping through blackmagiccraft.ca. On my essential equipment page, I have links to a lot of the stuff I use regularly and shopping through those links helps fund the production of these videos. If you really want to help me out in a major way, the best way you can do that is by supporting the channel on Patreon. That's it. That's all. Cheers. See you next time.